So I wanted to do a video sharing my top five favorite guard passes. The ones I'm gonna show, they're not necessarily the most important guard passes, but they're five of the ones that I enjoy doing the most. They're also very effective, but I think it's really important with your jujitsu that it's not just techniques that are effective, but you also have to really enjoy doing them. There's a certain artistic component to jujitsu as well. And if you really like doing stuff, you're gonna do it with a lot more enthusiasm and a lot more effectiveness. So one pattern I really like with the guard passes I do is I like them to be uh, very surprising or shocking shocking when they hit your opponent. Really good guard passes, uh, they usually catch the person off guard so they don't see it coming. Um, and you're gonna see that pattern in most all the passes I show today. So the first pass we're gonna look at is a one-arm throw variation. So often when you approach the guard, I like to center my opponent up first because to finish the guard pass, I need to get his hips down and keep him flat to start. So when he's on his side, I kind of move him to the center first. And here we can work toriandos and different passes. One common pass is a throw by here, but often your opponent will keep his knee kind of tight when you throw and another thing they'll do is that they'll often frame the floor with their hand on the hip like this so when I throw he kind of blocks the hip like this so one pass I like to do here is I kind of come in I go into a really calm state and I make my first grips and often people will grab your sleeve and what I'm gonna do is right when he grabs his sleeve I time this so that I pull my arm up like this and the fact that he's holding this sleeve means that he won't have any frame on the floor on that side so what it looks like grab the sleeve there is like this and see, the fact that he has that sleeve, he didn't have that defense, so it pushes him to the side, and it's really easy to open this space, and I can step in to come in the on belly. Again, this is one of those things that's a really shocking move. Even if he gets the foot in the bicep a little bit, if I lift my elbow high, I can often slip it. So I'll be moving around, doing stuff. I go here, he makes a grip. See here? Boom and I go around there. So the second pass variation is a knee cut variation versus a knee shield type situation. So this one is extremely tricky to time, but when you land it, it absolutely slices right through their guard, especially versus really flexible, complicated guards. This is one of my favorites. So what happens is he's gonna be kind of on like a side tilt and a knee shield. I'm gonna control the top pant leg here, and I start to step in the center. Now often here, I wanna control this leg either to prevent a reverse daily heba hook or to just keep it trapped in between my legs so I can progress to a knee cut. But what often happens versus flexible guard players, I'll grab here, he'll break that grip and then bring his foot back up to my hip like this. And now he might even have the cross collar grip and I get stuck in like a collar sleeve kind of situation, right? What's gonna happen is I start to enter here and now as I go for this, say he even has a collar already, as I start to go for this, is uh, we're gonna go slow, he's gonna try to break it and I'm gonna time that to grab his sleeve and at the exact same moment he does that, this top hand on the leg is gonna punch right behind me and clear this knee. So we're here, so like this, so you grab, so go ahead and break, and I shoot right there. Now I've cleared this top leg behind me and this one I catch the sleeve. And what this does is now I can start turning this into a knee cut by pulling up on this sleeve. Once I've cleared this behind, now he can't lasso no matter how flexible he is because I have this and it can even progress up to here. Sometimes depending on the movement, I'll just keep this grip and I elevate this sleeve and I try to flatten the shoulder blades and come through like this. You can finish with the arm over the back here as well, but this back pant grip can be great too. Uh, I saw Leandro Lowe use a pass variation like this for the first time in a BGJ hacks video a long time ago, and I've just adapted to it and found this to be very effective, right? So again, he's here, he's got the collar. I start to grab this, he goes to break. I launch right there, get that timing, come in, pull the sleeve up and finish. So the third one is the classic Leandro cut. So the big idea here is he's got my leg or a pant leg or ankle and like De La Hiva guard. This is such a common situation to force. Uh, like if his legs are up, I might step in the center. It kind of bisects his legs and I can kind of lock him in this kind of position. So what I want to do here is I'm just going to control the De La Hiva leg, get pants if I can here. And now I'm going to kind of step back and I want to pin his hips down towards the floor using my hand on the shin or the pant leg. And now I'm going to start Start trapping this leg and there's two main versions of this if he has my collar I trap this leg I'm gonna switch my hand up to the knee here and I want to open this and bring his hips open towards the floor here so I open and now as I get his hips pinned I can shoot this underhook and try to catch the arm or just frame the rib but as long as his hips are pinned to the floor it's easy to shoot my knee through now a lot of times here what happens is he'll keep holding the pant leg as long as I have this underhook he cannot rotate back to the side turn back to the left see he can't turn back Eventually I can drive through and I'll keep driving. I'll break this grip and come up to the knee cut. Another variation of this, if he's not grabbing my collar, but he's looking for my sleeve and it can be very fast. As long as his hips are down, I can tap this and lunge from really far away like that. And it's a very fast version as well. So again, I land here now in this way. I pull up on this underhook, start shooting my knee through and I can switch to different 
and you cut finishes or variations you like. So the next sequence, I just call the De La Hiva drop pass. And this is a variation. It's actually one of the old school passes you learn uh, when you open the closed guard, where you drop your knee and pass to the same side as your knee. But we're just doing it from De La Hiva guard or the open guard. So often what happens is I'm stepping in the De La Hiva guard, I'm controlling the leg. I start to control the shin or pant leg, depending. And I start to open the leg a little. I like to use my shin to open this. So at some point, once I get this back enough, I start switching to this pant leg here. And as long as it's extended enough, he can no longer bring his knee back. So I bring you, see, it gets stuck. This often will make your opponent go to try to break this sleeve grip like this, right? So the thing is, if he's going for my sleeve, he has nothing protecting his chest or his neck here. If he's on the collar, it's different, and I can show that in a second. So I'm here like this. So now I know he's going to go for that. And again, it takes good timing. But what happens is as he breaks, he extends his leg, and I drop my hand here to the floor so that my armpit drops past his leg, right? So what that looks like, again, we're here, he grabs the sleeve, he kicks to break, and I drop there. At this point, his leg cannot come back, right? See how my armpit is past the leg? And realistically, when I do this, I'm gonna land chest to chest and cast a cross face. I get so much force here that it's very easy to clear this and do kind of a windshield wiper pass, right? So again, I'll do it a little bit quicker. We're here like this, I'm moving. I can even do it if he grabs my hand when it's on the ankle. Yeah, and he starts kicking to break. Like that and go through. If he's holding my collar, it's a little bit different. So what happens with the collar grip here is we're like this. So now he grabs the collar. As long as I have this press behind, he can't really move. So he's kind of stuck and he'll often panic and pull the collar to try to off balance. When he pulls, there's no frame and I can drop back in and do the same kind of pass. Uh, this one I really like doing a lot as well. It's a, it's a Toriando variation. So a lot of times when your opponent's centered, you're doing more like leg drag or Toriando's like this, but sometimes your opponent will be on his side here and those kind of variations can feel difficult. So what I do is I control the shin or the ankle here and then really quickly at the side angle, catching the knee is a lot easier. When we're centered, the knee doesn't feel as natural, but when we're here like this, catching this knee really quick is pretty easy and it makes it really easy because he's keeping his knee tight to protect the elbow knee space to get a really really fast spin like this, right? So go back. So what happens is I do this and almost always he's gonna try to frame my shoulders. So right when I spin him, I'm gonna pull my arm out. So I go here like this. And then now I start trying to come in and finish in a north south type sequence. So the last one is just a reverse leg drag variation. Um, I just love this one because again, it's one of those ones that it just shocks the opponent so fast. I usually go into a really calm state before I do most of my passes. A lot of people, they approach the guard and they're like trying to control and they're really tight. But when you approach and you just kind of come in and relax, it's so shocking when you do things. And that's how a lot of these passes work. I'm here and then I drop, right? So with this one, he grabs my pant leg. So often people here are worried about leg drags. They're worried about you trapping the leg to go for a knee cut. So you're just kind of here calm and he's worried about this other stuff. And then you pop and go. Right, and the big thing here is if he's on a side tilt, it's hard to, to br even if I bring this across, he's already on his side, it's hard to drive through to finish. But when I just steer him flat, right, we're here like this, and I just kind of steer him flat here, now it's just really calm and I, I, I kind of pop the knees forward or the shin even like this and, it and I pull my leg back, right, and it creates that nice little separation there and then I can snap. Again, I do this really quick. Um, sometimes I'll do it with just the ankle like this, uh, his pants are really short, but if they're longer, sometimes when you fight people, they have different lengths of pants, it's easier to control where the foot goes. So if the pants are up here, I can steer where the foot goes. If the pants are all the way up here, sometimes his foot can catch your hip. So in those cases, that's where doing the ankle might be useful, right? But again, if his pants are up here like this, I might be here moving, he's worried about the cut. Boom, I clear and I can drop in and pass. So again, a lot of these passes have this similar theme of they're really uh, explosive uh, and shock your opponent. The cool thing with this is even if your opponent has full energy, these techniques can work and you can pass the guy's guard like instantly, right? Pressure passing is great as well and I do like a lot of different pressure passes, but they're more like you're wearing the guy down over time. So after two or three minutes, you wear him out and he kind of gives in and gives you the pass. Whereas with these, I feel like right at the get-go, you can shock your opponent and get a clean guard pass. Hope you guys like the video uh, if you want to help support the channel like and go ahead and leave a comment and let me know what some of your guys favorite guard passes are thanks a lot